fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. I love the outdoors. Hot summers, cold winters, bring it on. There's nothing more exhilarating to me than getting together with friends in the middle of winter time and heading out on a frozen lake to experience what you can only experience in the north, ice fishing. You know, when it comes to fishing for whitefish, especially jigging, finesse is really important. So what James and I are doing we're actually jigging right on the bottom, shaking it like I am doing right now. And then every once in a while, we're making a longer stroke. And that longer stroke is to track the fish. If there's any whitefish in the area that are moving through, we're actually attracting them. But when they come close, if we see them on the sonar, then we'll just shake it on the bottom. You know, it's so nice. I'm out here with James Beaupre, my good fishing buddy. He was kind enough to get his machines and get us out here with a friend of his. And uh, we're targeting whitefish with the chance of getting a lake trout or even a jumbo perch. Whitefish can be really finicky when you're trying to get them. They're either on and feeding or, you know, you can get frustrated because you'll see them on the sonar and you just won't be able to get them. You can see we're using these light outfits. It's kind of nice to use a spinning outfit. I threw my gloves off, but I'll tell you what, it's cold today. The ice is about a foot and a half thick, and I'm slowly trying to inch them. Okay, nice white fish. I'm trying to get them up. Look at, isn't that a gorgeous fish? You know, this is the second fish that came in. The first one didn't hit, and I was using the jig. So what I did was change up to this finesse fish. I'm gonna hold him up. Isn't that a gorgeous white fish? and I'm gonna get him back in the water. There he goes. In the winter time, I love to target all different species of fish, from panfish on smaller reservoir, to walleye and pike on medium-sized lake, and even lake trout and whitefish on big lakes and out in deep water. You know, over the years in fishing different places through the ice, I've used all kinds of augers, from very small, four-inch diameter manual augers to big ones. And then when the ice gets really thick, with power augers, you know? And sometimes with the fuel, it's messy, and you've got a pull cord that you have to pull and stuff. I gotta tell you, I'm so excited about these new generation of electric augers. This particular one is a lithium-powered one, and this one is 40 volts. First of all, you can see it's really compact. And look at, there's the battery right here. You see this block right here? Was that nice? I'm just teasing you. It cuts like it's going through butter. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'll do that again. Pull the trigger, hit the power button. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. Today I'm fishing with a good friend, James Beaupre. James likes to fish all year long, and in fact, he may fish more than I do. I think every week he's fishing about three days a week. In the summertime, he uses a bass boat. In the wintertime, he has machines like ATVs and uh, portable huts. And sometimes he'll head up to six miles on frozen lakes in search of some of his favorite fish. I love to fish with James because there's never a dull moment. There we go. 
<laughs> you know, I tell we got another one on here. You know, I've got fond memories of when we were getting the lake trout. I think that was the only time we've been out when it's been decent weather. Do you remember we did the bass show? Oh, and we got, boy, oh We got boy. wet like ducks. <laughs> You're not even getting your hands wet. Yeah. What oh. is with that? Have you ever gone for them up north where they're a lot smaller? Oh, like Lake St. Joe and all those lakes? Yeah, they're, they're smaller. They're like a pound and a half, you know, to three pounds. Gorgeous colors. Gorgeous. Beautiful. On this outing, we've decided to travel quite a ways out on a lake, and James wants to target whitefish. Now, to me, they're not the easiest fish to catch, summer or winter time, because they normally feed in deep water. But James is on a pattern where the whitefish are coming up to very large shoals in the open lake and feeding anywhere from 20 to about 40 feet in depth. Most anglers targeting whitefish will either use tip-ups with the live minnow, and if you're gonna be using a tip-up, one of my favorite is the Tip and Jig Total Ice Fishing System. It has the most sensitive trigger on the market, so you can detect the lightest strikes, and when you hook a fish, even if it's a big one, it has a locking mechanism where the rod can't be pulled off the stand. And what I like about it is that it uses a spinning reel on a handle where you can interchange the tips from a light, medium, to heavy action. So for those of you that like to fish bait, not just for whitefish, but for any species of fish, the tip and jig is an excellent option. The one thing that I really appreciate on the handle of the actual tip and jig is that it's got like these, uh, see the little grooves right there? So when I'm using mitts like I am now, because that wind is really cold and I was scooping the ice out of my hole so my hands got wet, it's got those little, uh, indentations which is ideal even with a mitt to actually hold if they weren't there if uh, you got a good fish on the rod could slip out of your hands and the other thing that's really nice is those interchangeable tips right now I'm using the light action tip because we're going with light line in this finesse presentation so really the tip and jig system even though we've got the tip ups set up behind me is perfect for jigging like this very sensitive and when you get a fish on no problem fighting it One of the things that you have to do when you get out on the ice is cut yourself a hole, obviously, so you can fish. The only challenge is that in the wintertime, depending how cold the winter's been, that ice can be anywhere from six inches to over three, four feet in thickness. Most people will either use a gas power auger or they'll use an electric power auger. Today, there are so many augers on the market, and I had the privilege of using the Strike Master 40 volt electric auger, and I'm telling you, this thing is amazing. It cuts through ice like a knife going through butter. And the nice thing is that it has rechargeable batteries. So it's very clean for the environment. You just take extra batteries if you're gonna cut lots of holes. And for your next outing, you just put them on charge and you're ready to go. This is amazing, you know. We're out here, we're probably out about five or six miles from shore. And it hasn't been easy because of this wind. And the other thing that we're dealing with on this particular day, this is the third day of a full moon, which isn't in our best interest because whitefish can do a lot of feeding at night. So we have a harder time getting them to bite during the day. A lot of times too, you know, if the hook, if fish is hooked just on the edge of the mouth, when you try to bring it up too fast, it'll actually hit the side of the hole. Come on, can I pull them up? I'm gonna, I'm gonna use James' technique, look. I'm gonna slide them up, look it. I bet you when they're down there feeding near the bottom, because of that dark back and that silvery, like gold sides, they're almost invisible to their prey. Look it, you can see how that mouth is. It's not that big, but they can open it pretty wide. And when it closes, you can see it actually is on the bottom part of the fish, so they can go right along the bottom. Now, I haven't had this guy out of the water too long. He's actually being really good. He's being like a TV prop. Look at this beautiful specimen. He's gonna be released. Now, because the hole is pretty long, I'm gonna kinda of launch it, so you better watch quick. There he goes. And he should be gone, right down to the bottom. Now, I am amazed, you know, I've used finesse fish for probably, I'm gonna say almost 40 years. This is such a simple lure, 
but you can see how flexible that plastic is, and you can see the profile that it looks just like a minnow. Whitefish can reach weights in some lakes of over five pounds. In fact, the lake we're fishing produces whitefish up to 10 pounds. When whitefish get that big, they really learn to fish on smaller bait fish and gobies. Smaller whitefish in isolated inland lakes will feed mostly on invertebrates and little organisms along the bottom and also crayfish. But when whitefish grow big, they predominantly look for bait fish. You know, some people think bigger is better. How about longer? Look at my ice fishing rod. It's five feet from the end of the butt to the tip of the rod tip. So this is actually one of the new rods the Tip and Jig came out with this year. It's a two piece, so it connects in the center, but it also pops out so you can interchange it with the other shorter rods. So this rod, maybe a lot of guys wouldn't use for ice fishing if they're fishing for smaller fish, but you know what? I've got lots of friends that go for steelhead through the ice when they're at the mouth of the Great Lakes tributaries in the winter time and they use light line and those steelhead fight like crazy and they get them up to like 10, 14 pounds. So a long rod like this would actually work really well. And also on some of the bigger northern lakes where you get whitefish like we are today and lake trout, you'd have a lot of fun on a longer rod like this. Got him. Hello. You know, I'm looking in the distance, James. Look at all the machines that are out here. Quite a few today. I don't think anybody has walked out here the no, distance that we're come out. <laughs> now, I'm admiring this baby because it's not just a Yamaha, and that's a 700cc, a 4x4, but I'm looking at it. This is like a totally souped-up machine. Yeah, we did a lot of modifications on it to okay, customize well, it for the ice. And the tracks, those oh, are yeah. like amazing. They're like a tank. I guess you can go with them through deep snow, yeah. no problem. The, the tracks, are, if you see it when you go on the lakes now, they're just unbelievably popular. The last five years, you didn't see a lot of tracks, but the technology in the tracks now, you can run them all year. Um, they just float on top of the snow. So believe it or not, these walks should go through stuff that snowmobiles have a hard time going through. Wow, so, amazing. Just tapping that MIGS on the bottom, just ever so gently. And there we go. Man, you're the epitome of a hook setter. <laughs> James, you don't uh, hesitate. You pull the trigger. You Bang. gotta pull that trigger. Ooh, it looks like a good fish. I can see it. This is nice because you got like that clear ice. Somebody else was, oh, 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 nice and easy, nice and easy. Good one, okay perfect I don't get my hands wet you know when I see these fish in the stores the smaller ones I don't know where they come from maybe like Winnipeg they're pretty expensive when you buy them they are so we can justify you know spending the gas and coming out here to get a bunch of these smaller white fish will feed on a lot of smaller organisms especially invertebrates and small uh, copepods and things that are in the water, you know, freshwater shrimp and so on. But when whitefish are bigger, they go for bait fish. And the ones that we're going after today are anywhere from three to five pounds and even bigger. So if you're gonna use a lure that imitates bait fish, the finesse fish is one of the best ones from Lunker City. These are three of my favorite color. This is the shad color. And you can see that they're rigged with the finesse fish head, which helps them to plane from side to side. This is the, I think it's called the Arkansas shad. You can see it's got kind of a brown color, especially that side, you can see in the sunlight, how beautiful that looks. And then uh, this one is that, uh, look at flake with the red and purple. It's got really all iridescent colors in there. So one of the main reasons why these work so well is their body profile. You see, they're pretty thin if I hold it up. It's not a really wide body bait. And also it's very limp. See if I shake it. So you can imagine when this thing is falling and going from side to side, even though it doesn't have a paddle tail, it really looks lifelike. 
And literally what I do is lift it up to track the fish, but when it's on the bottom, I just shake it back and forth to give that kind of action. And usually with the whitefish, when it's laying down on its side, that's when the whitefish will go for it and they'll inhale it in the front half of the body. And usually that gets the hook in their mouth. So this is a great lure to use in open water for walleye, bass, pike, all those different fish, but also ice fishing, especially for whitefish. You know I like fishing with you. <laughs> There's never a dull moment. Even when I'm not getting fish, I can just come over here and watch you. It's just as entertaining, you know what I mean? You always put on a good show. Get it? Good That's show? Good show. Yeah, yeah. You're doing great. You should be a little quieter, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you're, you're just trying oh, to focus. Oh, it's a fish. Yeah, yeah. Nice fish. You watch that treble hook. You're being very careful. Look at yeah. Gorgeous. Man, that sun is starting to shine on them. Now they're looking more gold. Beautiful. Did you mark them before you hook them? Absolutely. Did you mark any other ones? Because we just got here. We just got here. Yeah, what we're doing, just you know, James, this is our third move. So you really have to have a machine. Look at how gorgeous, that, that is like picture perfect. You gotta have a machine to move around down here because I think when we're moving, it's like a half a mile or more from spot to spot. How do you know when to move? Because no more fish we marking. <laughs> You're being honest. I thought you were going to say, well, Italo, I look at the sun and I look at the trees and I just know when we've got to well, move. I can make up a story if you like. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's an awesome fish. So, Italo, you think this is a fish for the pan? Well, I got a question for you. Do you think we're going to get more before we so. go in? I hope so. You know what? We're going to release them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can go ahead. He fought so well. On this outing, even though we had the tip and jig set up with minnows as a tip up, we found that most of the action came while using the tip and jig rod and jigging on the bottom. I have a feeling it's because the whitefish weren't really looking to feed, but because we were manipulating the jig on the bottom, we were getting them to strike and they were hitting very lightly. The one thing that I like about the tip and jig system is that I was able to go down to the light action rod and I even played around with the five foot long rod that you can use if you're open water fishing with the tip up or even through the ice where you want to get a little bit of distance between your hole or where your sonar is. And if you're fish for fish that fight hard like trout or steelhead through the ice, the long rod gives you a lot more torque if you're using light line. So the tip and jig is versatile because you can use it as a tip up or for jigging and you'll catch lots of fish. Good job. Easy does it. Could be an eater. Yeah. Easy does it. Perfect. Now this one's got a fin clip on it. He does. So it's definitely a, a certain stock year class. So we didn't talk. You, you uh, get the lure out so that uh, we can handle the fish. Now this is interesting. Look, James, we talked about earlier, you know, if the fish are still being stocked. They are, right? So some they, they clip. This one you can see has one of the pelvic fins clipped. Sometimes they have the adipose clipped or one of the front fins. This lake has a great put, grow, and take fishery. So a lot of the fishermen that come out here, you know, try to get their two fish for eating. I know most of the guys probably that you see are taking the fish off the ice, right? And if they get more, they release them carefully. But these guys, I think, grow really fast. I'm guessing that that guy's about a four to five year old. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because they can get pretty big. You said earlier that you saw a fish that was like 10 pounds. 10, we were last week, we caught two over 10. Wow, those are monsters, gorgeous fish. White fish are bottom feeding fish. And one really important detail when you're fishing for them is to fish between one to two feet of the bottom. I like to fish for them right on the bottom, whether I'm using live bait or I'm jigging. If you're gonna be jigging with a vertical jigging spoon or a jigging lure or a blade bait, you don't need really big jigs. Maybe every once in a while to attract the fish that's off in the distance. But when you think there's a fish close to you or you see one on your ice sonar, just make very short shaking action on the bottom. Whitefish are great sport through the ice. 
they fight really hard when you hook them, especially if they're up to four, five, six pounds. They fight much like a trout. They'll head shake, they'll roll in the line, and they'll even run horizontally. And one thing that's tough to do is when you get them close to the ice hole, you have to be very careful whether you're using bait with just a single hook or a lure with one or more treble hooks, that as you're bringing the fish up, especially if the ice hole is pretty deep, about one to two feet or even more, when you get its head close to the hole, you gotta be careful that you don't get the hook stuck on the side of the ice. A lot of times that's when a white fish will tear off. White fish have very soft mouths and they don't have any contours. So once you hook one, the hook will stay in there, but you gotta be gentle and have your drag set right. Not only are they great to catch through the ice or in the summertime, but they have a nice white flaky meat that is delicious on the table. A lot of times when you're fishing for whitefish in shallower water, less than 50 feet, you don't need to use a big lure. You don't necessarily need to use a lure that has rattles. This is called a slab wrap, and it doesn't have any rattles. When I shake it, you don't hear anything. So it's literally a blade bait, but it's got a body to it, plastic body. So when you lower it down, it sinks pretty quick, but as soon as you start twitching it, it has a really nice side-to-side -side flashing action and it's normal to hit the bottom with it. You can literally jig as if it was a jig. So this lure works really well for large panfish through the ice, especially jumbo perch. Uh, lake trout will whack this thing, but especially for whitefish. Now a lure that's a little bit longer and bigger, but the same type of configuration. This is a lightning wrap, it's made by Storm. And I'll hold it here so I don't put shadow over it. You can see how iridescent the colors are. Here, let me hold it like that. If I move it, see all those different colors? go. You can see how, how deep the ice is. Whew, that was a nice hit. It's okay, I'm getting my sleeve wet. Beautiful whitefish. I had three fish come in, you know. Two didn't take, they looked. That guy came in, looked. I switched from the finesse fish to the slab wrap, and bang, that fish nailed it. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Now this is what you gotta do, you gotta have pockets and stuff to warm up. But look, this little lure, it looks tiny, the slab wrap. I've had such good luck with it, fishing everything from uh, large panfish and even big game fish like that, like beautiful whitefish and lake trout. It's tiny, you know, you look at it, it looks like an ultralight lure, but for this kind of fishing, it's perfect. Okay, 20 minutes, and then I'll be back in action. I think I'm just gonna ponder things. Yes. Warm up. 